What's up guys, Justin here with the renderingessentials.com back with another Inkscape new feature tutorial for you. So last week I created a video talking about the stuff contained inside of Inkscape 3.1. Today I wanted to talk through how to use the new material library and um, material editor tools in a little bit more detail. So we're going to talk through how to use those different tools. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so um, one of the great things that was added in Inkscape 3.1 was, first of all, they've overhauled the material editor, which we'll talk about in a minute, and they've also given you the option to use their material library. So let's let's look at that one first. So now there's built-in materials that you can access inside of Inkscape by clicking on this button right here. And so right now what those are going to do is those are currently residing in the cloud, meaning that they're not actually on your computer. So for example, let's say inside of this example model that we have from the 3D warehouse that we wanted to adjust a material. So I'm going to just click on the explode button Then let's just jump in here. Let's say we wanted to make this more of like a concrete material or something like that. Well, what you can do is you can access the material library inside of Inkscape by clicking on this button. Well, then we can click on the option here for all of the different concrete materials. In this case, I want something with a little bit of texture to it. So we're going to go ahead and click on this concrete 04 and I'm going to go ahead and bring that in. So to bring that in and use it, you can click on the button for import selection. So when you click on the button for import selection, what that's going to do is that's going to add this material over here in your materials section. And you can find that by closing out of the uh, material library and then clicking on the drop down and looking for in model. And so when you look in model, um, first of all, these are in here alphabetically. So we want to look for the concrete material that just got brought in. So that's going to be right here. And it's actually highlighted. It's already there for you to click on. But if we click on this, now we can apply that material inside of SketchUp. So notice if I come in here and I apply that to the faces inside of my example model, I now have the concrete material in here that I can use. Now you can adjust that by clicking the edit tab and making this bigger or smaller. So if we make this maybe something like five feet, you gotta be a little bit careful because you do get some tiling in here, but you can adjust the size of that texture over here on the right hand side. So now that's in our model and it's ready to render. And so one of the cool things about this is when you bring things in from the material library, you click over to your material editor right here. So if I click on this, notice how this already has the maps that come along with that loaded in. So in this case, all this one has is it has a reflection map or a roughness map right here that comes along with it. But it's already loaded that in, so we don't have to go find that or load it in or anything like that. So then we could also come in here and we could use the albedo for the bump map if we wanted to do that. But that's actually going to show up in your materials list. Well, now if we were to render this, that's already going to be a pre-set up material that's going to look really good in your Inkscape rendering. So if we jump over into Inkscape and take a look at this material, so let's just fly into this a little bit. Um, notice how, and I'm going to adjust my sun a little bit, notice how your bump map comes in here really nice as well as your reflections do. So it looks really realistic based on the maps that are in here. Obviously there's some lighting things we could do with this, but just notice that that material is coming in really realistic um, based on what's in the actual library itself. So in addition, if there's materials that you like, you can click on that star button right here in order to add that to your favorites. And so when you add that to your favorites, one thing I'm not sure about is I think you do still have to import this. So it's not like you're importing it and saving it on your hard drive. If you wanted to save this on your hard drive, you'd have to do it through the material uh, editor, which we'll talk about how to do in a little bit. So that's how you can bring in materials from the Inkscape material library. Let's say you wanted to bring in a custom material. So let's say I brought something in from like, uh, let's say I brought something in from Polyhaven. So let's just browse the textures and I think, let's go with this brick moss material. So we're gonna bring this in, maybe like a 2K, something like that. I don't want it to be super giant. Um, so we're gonna bring this into 2K and we're going to go ahead and click on the download button. So when we download this material, what it's gonna do is it's gonna download a folder with all those different material maps. And as always, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring those into SketchUp. So the way that's gonna work is we're gonna jump back into SketchUp and I'm just gonna add this as a material. So, so I'm gonna start by just adding this as a material and we're just gonna call this, uh, I think it was brick moss. And we're just going to find that texture image and we'll go ahead and we'll extract this to a folder. So I'll just bring it in right here. And we wanna start by bringing in the diffuse map. 
right? So we're just gonna bring this in. That adds it as a material inside of SketchUp. So I could apply that to this face. It's not ideal on the front face, so maybe we'll just leave that looking like concrete. And let's go ahead and apply it to the front. So we can bring this in, right? And then in order to load the maps in, we need to jump over into the Enscape Material Editor. And so notice how this brick moss is gonna show up in our material list right here. And so we're gonna wanna head, go ahead and set all that up. And so that one came in with a displacement map. So we're just gonna go find that real quick. It's just gonna be this D DISP. We're gonna note that this is a displacement map. And then we also wanna bring in our roughness map. So that's gonna be this object right here. So now, what we've done is we've created this brick moss material. So if we jump over into Enscape to render it, you can see how this material came in. It actually looks really good with a displacement map. So notice how it's got the ups and downs and all of that in here. You could adjust how strong the effect is, obviously, but just the fact that it looks rough, I think is a really good thing. So we've got a great material in here that we're gonna to wanna to use in the future. Well, what we can do now is we can actually save that. So we couldn't save it before. We had to set up materials every single time that we ever did this. So what we can do now is we can click on the brick moss material we just created. Notice how that's got all this stuff in here. We can click on the three dots. We can click on the button for export material package. So when I click on export material package, that gives us the ability to place that material package somewhere. So let's jump over. So let's jump over here and I'm just going to save this in my assets folder. So I'm just going to click on save. So now I've got that material file that I can bring in in a new SketchUp file. All right. So now let's say that we had a new SketchUp project right here. Well, what I wanna do is I wanna bring in that brick material file that we had before. So what you can do is you can go through your Enscape material editor right here. And so what we wanna do is we wanna click on the button right here for batch import dot M-A-T P-K-G. So we're gonna click on that. We're gonna go find, we're gonna go find that material. See how I have two in here right now. Well, right now I just wanna bring in the um, brick moss. So I'm just gonna click in here in order to bring that in. So that's gonna load that into Enscape. Well, notice how not only does it load it into your SketchUp material library, so you can access it right here, it also loads in the additional information that you had before, which is linking your displacement maps, your roughness maps, other things like that. So if we were to render this and look at this material, um, notice how we now have that in there where we can bring that into any project in the future really quickly without having to reset all of that up. So you've got your displacement, everything else in here, and it just looks really good. All right, so that should give you a good idea how to use the material editing tools. If you do want to learn more about Enscape 3.1, I will link to that on this page. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.